Good morning everyone. Today I am discussing about development of interatrial septum. First of all about the heart tube. We have seen in the last classes that heart tube it is made up of from below upward sinus venosus then primitive atrium, primitive ventricle and the bulbous cordis and distal part of the bulbous cordis is called as truncus arteriosus. Now junction of the primitive atrium and sinus venosus has sino atrial orifice and junction of primitive ventricle and primitive atrium this is called as AV canal because atrial ventricles are connecting here so this is called as atrioventricular canal now the septum first which is formed how it is formed we will see here first from uh, sept, uh, initially formation of septum AV septum or the septum intermedium so how the septum intermedium is formed here you can see in this diagram folding of the tube uh, heart tube has been done and uh, atria are located cranially and dorsally and ventricles they are located anteriorly or the ventrally or inferiorly so ventricles are antero inferior and atria are posterior superior to the ventricles now in the anterior and posterior wall of the primitive uh, in the uh, antero anterior and posterior wall of the ventricles there will be formation of the two endocardial cushion this is primitive atrium and this is AV canal so at the AV canal anterior and posterior part there will be formation of the two cushions endocardial cushions and these cushions meet in the midline so this is ventral cushion AV cushion and the dorsal cushion they meet and they cl come closer to each other and they will meet in the midline and they that will lead to formation of the septum intermedium or the AV septum so how the AV septum or the septum intermedium is formed by the fusion of the AV cushions and these AV cushions are formed in the anterior wall and the posterior wall of the AV canal they will come close to each other and they will fuse and they uh, there will be formation of septum intermedium or the AV septum and this septum intermedium will divide the this AV canal into right half and the left half as you can see in the diagram this is the right half of the AV canal and this is the left half of the AV canal now coming to the formation of interatrial septum <coughs> so initially there, uh, there is common atrial chamber this is the common atrial chamber and there will be formation of a septum which is arising from the roof of the primitive atrial chamber and this septum is first from septum so it is called as septum primum and it is growing downwards toward the septum intermedium lower one this bluish one is the septum intermedium and the septum primum which is coming from the roof of the primitive atrial chamber is coming towards the septum intermedium so first from septum is the septum primum and before fusion of the septum primum uh, and the septum intermedium there is a gap in between these two so this gap is called as foramen, foramen primum because it is first from foramen before the fusion of septum primum and septum intermedium so first from septum is septum primum and first from foramen is called as foramen primum now what happens just right to the septum primum here this uh, now what happens this septum primum will get fuses with the septum intermedium but during fetal life there is no pul uh, pulmonary circulation because the lungs are non-functional so uh, left atrium how it will get blood so it is necessary in the fetal life that there should be a communication from right atrium to the left atrium so that blood can come from the right atrium into the left atrium so if the septum primum will get fuses with the septum intermedium then what uh, there will be no communication between these two so what happens for this when this uh, as the septum primum fuses with the septum intermedium there will be break in the septum primum in the upper part so there will be degeneration of the cells in the upper part of the septum primum so that the communication between right atrium and left atrium will remain to allow the flow of blood from right atrium to the left atrium okay so as the 
septum primum fuses with the septum intermedium then there will be break in the upper part of the septum primum and a second foramen is formed this form uh, foramen is called as foramen secundum now foramen primum has been obliterated and foramen secundum has been formed now again a septum from the right side of the septum primum this pinkish one was the septum primum which has been degenerated in the upper part and the right to it a septum secundum is arising from the roof of atrial chamber and it is growing downwards and this septum secundum is rigid and firm and but the septum primum was thin and like a flap so this septum secundum which is the greenish one is growing downwards and it is coming uh, closer to the septum primum and as it reaches the near the septum primum or it overlaps the foramen primum sorry foramen secundum then it will stop growing as this septum secundum overlaps the overlap or come closer to the septum secundum there will be a formation of a valvular passage between septum secundum and septum primum and this valvular passage is now called as foramen ovale so what is a foramen ovale it is nothing but foramen secundum after formation of septum secundum so foramen sec uh, foramen ovale is a valvular oval opening between septum secundum and septum primum okay so valvular passage after formation of septum secundum which overlaps the foramen and lead to formation of a valvular opening why it is called as valvular opening because this uh, septum secundum is rigid one and when the blood flow from here right atrium to the left atrium it can go from here like this uh, from this valvular opening valvular oval opening so it allows the flow of blood from right atrium to the left atrium but when af just after birth when the lungs are functional and pulmonary veins bring blood into the left atrium then pressure in the left atrium will increase then what will happen then blood will flow from left atrium to the right atrium but do because i have told you that uh, the septum primum is like a flap so it will get approximate with the septum secundum so due to approximation of septum primum and septum secundum this valvular passage will be closed just after birth and this is called as functional closure of foramen ovale so why the functional closure of foramen ovale occurs and when occurs just after birth when pul pulmonary circulation starts and pulmonary veins are bringing blood into the left atrium then pressure in the left atrium will rise and blood will flow uh, will try to flow from left atrium to the right atrium but due because of this pressure because of increasing left atrial pressure this uh, both septum septum primum and septum secundum both will approximate it and they will close this opening okay so there will be functional closure of the foramen ovale and uh, this uh, foramen ovale is represented uh, this uh, lower margin of the septum this upper margin of the septum primum will be represented by fossa ovalis and lower margin of the septum secundum will be represented by limbus fossa ovalis now again uh, we will see in the detail that septum primum you can see in this diagram the septum primum is growing downwards and trying to reach with the septum intermedium but when until it is it uh, has not been fused there is a gap and this gap is called as foramen primum and this first form septum is called as septum primum and this bluish one this uh, opening is the sinoatrial orifice and it has got two wells left venous well and the right venous well okay and this uh, both venous well they fuse with the roof of the atrium to form the septum sporium which i have told you in the last class now the after formation of septum uh, now uh, when the septum primum has been fused with the septum intermedium to allow flow of blood the septum primum will break in the upper part 
and then it is lead, lead to formation of this foramen secundum now after formation of foramen secundum a septum is arising from the roof of the uh, atrial chamber and it is growing downwards and this when this uh, septum reaches at the lower margin of the foramen uh, or the foramen secundum then formation of a valvular passage and that is called as foramen ovale so septum secundum is the second septum which is arising from the roof of the septum uh, of the atrial chamber which is present right to the septum primum this is septum secundum and the to allow flow of blood from right atrium to the left atrium primitive uh, septum will break in the upper part that lead to formation of septum uh, foramen secundum or the ostium secundum and after formation of foramen se uh, septum secundum this valvular passage between septum primum and secundum that is called as foramen ovale and is it allowed flow of blood from right atrium to the left atrium not from the left to ri uh, right atrium so this is the valvular opening that uh, and it its shape is oval so it is called as foramen ovale so the how the septum interatrial septum is formed it is formed by septum primum in the lower part septum secundum which is greenish one in the upper part both will approximate to each other just after just at just birth and uh, this sept left venous valve and septum spurium they will also contribute in formation of interatrial septum okay so these are the components of interatrial septum septum primum septum secundum septum spurium and the left venous valve they also contribute in formation of interatrial septum and uh, i already have told you that at birth some changes occur that uh, because of increasing left atrial pressure septum primum and septum secundum will come closer to each other and valvular opening will be closed now some atrial interatrial defects first is the septum primum defect if septum primum fails to reach the septum intermedium okay so there will remain gap in between these two and foramen primum will persist so this is called as septum primum defect and leading to foramen persistent foramen primum now septum secundum defect in this condition septum secundum is growing downwards but it is not reaching up to the lower margin of foramen ovale so it is not overlapping the foramen sorry foramen secundum so lead to large foramen secundum or the ostium secundum defect or the large ostium secundum and this is called as ost uh, second, uh, septum secundum defect and it may be due to less growth of the septum secundum or it may be due to excessive degeneration of the septum primum in the upper part so if there is uh, excessive degeneration of the septum primum in the upper part this uh, gap of the foramen secundum is very large and which is not fulfilled by the septum uh, uh, secundum lead to ostium secundum defect now the persistent foramen ovale or the propatency of the foramen ovale we have seen that it is a foramen ovale is a oblique valvular passage between primum and septum primum and the septum secundum it is functionally closed at birth but if remain patent anatomically though so uh, but if remain patent then it is called as patent foramen ovale functionally this uh, foramen ovale closes at birth and anatomically it uh, uh, closes around a 6 to month to 1 year up to 1 year it will be closed anatomically but functionally it is closed at birth because of increasing left atrial pressure but if remain it remain patent uh, that uh, the functionally it has been closed but probe can be passed through the sept between the septum primum and secundum then it is called as probe patency of the foramen ovale sometimes this uh, gap remain significant so the blood can flow from left atrium to the right atrium then it is uh, significant and lead to problems in the person
so this was all about formation of the interatrial septum and uh, if we summarize the class how the septum interatrial septum is formed so initially from the this is common atrial chamber and interatrial septum will divide the chamber into right atrium and the left atrium this septum first form septum from the roof of the primitive atrial chamber is called as septum primum and it is growing downwards to, to fuse with the septum intermedium before fusion of septum primum and secundum the gap remains and this first remain gap or the first uh, gap, uh, foramen is called as foramen primum after fusion of the septum primum with the septum uh, intermedium this uh, uh, septum primum will remain uh, will be degenerated in the upper part to allow flow of blood from right atrium to the left atrium because before birth it is necessary to fl uh, for flowing of blood into the left atrium because blood is not coming by pulmonary circulation to allow flow of blood from right atrium to the left atrium it is necessary that there should be a gap or the passage between left atrium and the right atrium so the second form, uh, formed septa, uh, foramen by degeneration of the septum primum in the upper part this is called as foramen secundum now a second septum is formed just right to the septum primum that is called as septum secundum and what is difference between septum primum and secundum this septum primum is thin and like a flap and septum secundum is thick and rigid and it is non mobile it is growing downwards and it is overlapping the foramen uh, secundum and then when it is overlapping the foramen secundum then a valvular passage is formed between septum primum and secundum and this valvular passage now is called as foramen ovale so foramen ovale is nothing but is foramen secundum after formation of septum secundum so this is how the foramen ovale is formed now this uh, left venous valve and the septum spurium both also will uh, merge with the septum uh, interatrial septum and they also contribute in formation of interatrial septum now uh, at birth uh, when the pulmonary uh, circulation has been started and blood is coming into the left atrium so left atrial pressure will increase and this flap like uh, septum primum will fuse uh, or the functionally fuses with the septum secundum and the foramen ovale will filled functionally or will be closed and uh, after uh, six to a month to after uh, or the at uh, around one year it will be closed anatomically and uh, this so the septum in uh, interatrial septum is formed by septum primum in the lower part septum secundum in the upper part and also from the left venous valve and septum spurium so this was all about formation of septum interatrial septum and uh, this uh, fossa ovalis is represented by septum primum and limbus fossa ovalis is represented by septum secundum lower free edge of the septum secundum will represent the annulus fossa ovalis and septum primum will represent the fossa ovalis and if there is a uh, less or the formation of the septum primum and defective formation then there will be gap in the between the septum primum and intervenium that is called as ostium primum defect or the septum primum defect if there is excessive degeneration of the septum primum in the upper part or less formation of the septum secundum then will be gap in the upper part that is called as ostium secundum defect and if this septum secundum will not overlap the sept, uh, foramen secundum then it is leading to formation of uh, patent foramen ovale and if the gap is closed functionally but not anatomically so that the probe can be passed but not allowing the flow of blood from left to right atrium then it is called as probe patency of the foramen ovale so that's all about interatrial septum thank you